In the day's other news, at least seven inmates died at a prison in South Carolina after a pitched battle that lasted most of the night. One inmate said bodies were, quote, stacked on top of each other. It happened at a maximum security facility in Bishopville, where gang members fought each other with homemade knives. Authorities say most of the dead were stabbed or beaten to death. Seventeen other prisoners were seriously injured. What we believe from the initial investigation is that this was all about territory. This is about contraband. This is about cell phones. And you've heard us talk about these over and over again. These folks are fighting over real money and real territory while they're incarcerated. At least 20 inmates have been killed in South Carolina prison since the start of last year. The head of the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, Scott Pruitt, faces new questions tonight. The Government Accountability Office reports the EPA illegally spent $43,000 on a soundproof communications booth for Pruitt's use. He's already under fire over first-class air flights and a bargain condo lease linked to an energy lobbyist. Meanwhile, an inspector general reported that Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke could have avoided taking a charter flight last year that cost $12,000. A powerful spring storm moved out of the northeast and mid-Atlantic today after blasting a wide swath of the nation and killing three people. A tornado struck Sunday near Greensboro, North Carolina, and the damage was bad enough to close three schools for months. Mayor Nancy Vaughn says the devastation is sweeping. It really looked like a war zone, and we have to remember that people are living in these conditions. Um, today, everybody is grateful just to be alive, as we are grateful that they are alive. They are going to be living under some very difficult conditions for a very long time. To the north, the system dumped two feet of snow in Wisconsin and Minnesota over the weekend and broke records for April snowfall all across the upper Midwest. In China, the widely used microblog site Weibo has reversed its decision to censor gay content after a public backlash. The company that runs Weibo initially said the crackdown was a response to tough cybersecurity laws. Now it says it will mainly focus on removing pornographic and violent material. President Trump moved today to fill two more vacancies on the Federal Reserve Board. The White House said he is nominating Richard Clarida, a professor at Columbia University, to be the Fed's vice chair. Kansas Bank Commissioner Michelle Bowen is the choice to fill a second slot. Both nominations require Senate approval. Wall Street's week is off to a good start. The Dow Jones Industrial Average gained nearly 213 points to close at 24,573. The Nasdaq rose 49 points and the S&P 500 added 21. And the 2018 Pulitzer Prizes are out and they are dominated by reporting on sexual misconduct and the Russia investigation. The New Yorker magazine and the New York Times won the Public Service Prize for coverage of the Harvey Weinstein scandal that galvanized the Me Too movement. The Times also won, along with the Washington Post, for investigating Russia's meddling in the 2016 U.S. election. In the arts, rapper Kendrick Lamar's album Damn took the music prize. He is the first non-classical or jazz artist to win a Pulitzer. And Andrew Sean Greer's novel Less won the prize for fiction. Still to come on the news hour, how revelations from the former FBI director affect the ongoing investigation surrounding the president. The situation in Syria following the weekend's airstrikes by Western allies. Inside the musical culture of the Tuareg people of Mali and much more.